Welcome to ETH, news and headlines from a prophetic perspective. Here at End Time Headlines, our mission is to inform our listeners of the times and seasons in which we are in. In Luke 21, 28, we are told when you begin to see all these things come to pass, lift up your heads, your redemption is drawing near. And now, founder and pastor of End Time Headlines, Ricky Scapero. Um, Again, good morning, uh, or good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you're joining me from. I'm Ricky Scabrell, the founder, the pastor, and the voice of End Time Headlines. And I don't know about where you're at, uh, Dion. I'm sure uh, it is much colder where you're at than it is for us. But for us uh, here in the United States, at least us Southerners, um, farther than even where I'm from, I'm here in Indiana, and man, it is cold uh, and the worst is yet to come for us as far as the cold weather. And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't like it. Um, uh, it, it, it hurts. There's a, a point of being cold to where it hurts. It's in your bones is what I call it. So it is bitter cold with wind chill factors. It is in the negatives here in Indiana. Uh, and many of you guys are know, uh, can relate to what I'm talking about today. So hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. Uh, had a good time with your family. Uh, it, we're, again, we're about two days after that. We're coming up on the new year. We're going to be wrapping up 2017, getting ready to head into 2018. Uh, I'm looking forward to the year 2018, looking forward to the, uh, to the new year and what God has in store for the body of Christ, what he has in store for my ministry personally, what he has in store for my family, and I'm excited about what he's got in store for you guys as well. So without further ado, guys, let's get into this thing. I want to take up your time. I want to minister today on something that I've never spoken of publicly. Uh, uh, Darlene, good to, to, to have you. This is your first time. Good to have you on here. It's good to see you. Uh, and we welcome you today. And we welcome everybody else who may be joining us via by YouTube or by Facebook Live. Today I'm going to minister a word that I've never ministered publicly. I've spoken about this in private circles. In fact, uh, this past weekend, as I was in Tennessee uh, there for Christmas, this very topic got brought up and it went on. Uh, this carried out for about an hour and a half conversation. So I want to share with you today publicly what we spoke about privately and what I've mentioned many times in private. And uh, and uh, and I'll and I want to elaborate on this, and we're going to get into some scripture here. Let's go to the Second Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse one. Again, Second Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse one. Um, and and when, I'm going to read this verse of scripture, and then I'm going to give a little bit of a disclaimer here to let you know my background, what I believe, and so on and so forth. So here we go. Oh, that you would bear with me in a little folly, and this is Paul speaking to the church of Corinth, and indeed. Do bear with me. Indeed, you do bear with me. For and listen what Paul says to the church of Corinth. I am jealous for you with godly jealousy. For I have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So there, uh, there's a lot of zeal that Paul has. I, I want you to hear Paul's heart in this. Paul loves the church. He loves the body of Christ. He has a great zeal for them. And he even says in verse 2, I am jealous for you with godly jealousy as a husband would to be over even over his wife. Now listen to what he says in verse 3, but I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness, so your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ. Did you hear that? Okay, and we're going to elaborate a little bit more on this when we get it. For if he, for if one comes to you preach and preaches another Jesus, somebody say another Jesus. We're in 2 Corinthians 11. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we, speaking of the apostles, have we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or a different gospel which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. Now, there's a lot of things here, guys, that I really got to bring out. Again, I just elaborated, elaborated on Paul's heart. You got to hear where he's coming from on this. 
This is not a bring, he's not bringing a, a word of rebuke or he's not coming out of bitterness. He's not coming out of resentment. There is no other motive in writing this to the church of Corinth, but a godly uh, fear to the body of Christ. He's coming as one who has, who had loves the body of Christ, who loves the people of God, and he's jealous for them, and he fears that they are being deceived. you got to get that. Okay, number two, he says, I fear that somehow your minds may end up being corrupted from the simplicity of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Now, what does this mean? Listen, do you know that there's people out there in the body of Christ, and we're really come to this in 2017, we're almost to 2018, and if 2018 is anything like we've seen over the last five years, then friends, we are in trouble in the body of Christ, and let me explain why. Because see, uh, the the same author who wrote to, to the church of Corinth also said, uh, in the I believe it was in the book of Romans, he says, I am determined to know nothing but Jesus Christ and him crucified. And he talks about the gospel of Christ, preaching the gospel of Jesus, preaching the gospel, uh, preaching the cross and preaching the the doctrine of, of Christ. But see, we've come to an hour, we've come to a time and we've come to a day which this gospel is not enough. It's not enough to preach Jesus Christ. It's not enough to preach the cross. It's not enough to preach the redemption that was paid on Calvary. It's not enough to preach the blood of Jesus. It's not enough to preach these things. Therefore, we have a group of individuals. We have a, a almost a collective body of Christ right now that is chasing after extra biblical interpretation, extra biblical revelations. They're chasing after. They're chasing after signs, wonders, and miracles rather than the, the, the Bible saying that these signs will follow those that believe. We have believers that are following the signs and wonders. They're exalting miracles, exalting signs, exalting wonders above the gospel, above the word of God, above doctrine. And anytime we have a scenario in which people begin to say that this is not enough and I have to have more and they gauge their walk with God upon their emotions or manifestations above the written word of God, then friends, you are setting yourselves up for deception. And this is why Paul says, I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve by his craftiness that your minds may be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. Now watch this. And he warns us that there will come a time when people will come and they will preach another Jesus that they, that the, that the, the apostles have not preached nor have they taught and they will have a different spirit about them that is contrary to the, than the, than the characteristics, the attributes and the things in which we read about in the gospels and they will preach a different gospel than what the disciples preached on. Now, having said that, that was 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 through 4. I have witnessed over the last at least 5 to 10 years strange spirits that have crept in by stealth in the body of Christ. And now, before I get into this thing, I do. I want to. I want to give you this disclaimer. If you guys have followed me, and I know we have new people here, uh, uh, I know people that are new here on this page. Uh, so you won't understand this, but for you guys that have followed Brother Ricky for any any length of time, you've been a follower of End Time Headlines. You've been a regular listener and a follower of our messages. You will know for certain that, listen, guys, I am what you're looking at an individual who I believe in the fullness of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the, I listen, I call, I don't like calling myself Pentecostal because I'm not a feast. Come on. Uh, the feast of Pentecost was a feast and Pentecost was a term used to describe individuals that believe in the, the, the fullness of the spirit of God, the gifts of the spirit. Listen, so I don't like all these tags and terms of charismatic, Pentecostal, spirit filled, all these things. Listen, I'm a believer 
of Jesus Christ, a disciple of Christ, and I believe in the whole Bible, 66 books, I believe that the nine gifts of the Spirit of God are still operative and they're still active in the in the body of Christ and in the believer today. I believe in the believer of God today can be filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and receive the prayer language of the Spirit. Yes, I believe and pray in other tongues. I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost 17 years ago. I believe that believers can be slain in the spirit. I believe believers can experience the joy of the Lord. I believe I believe we can clap, we can shout, we can dance, we can holler, we can lay down, we can cry. We can do all these things and have a good time in the body of Christ. However, having said that, I believe that we are seeing strange spirits that have crept into the body of Christ that are contrary than the Spirit of God. Now, let me give you a scripture on that. First John chapter 4, 1 John chapter 4, John warned us, he said, Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Let me say that again. Do not believe every spirit, but test or try the spirits, whether they are of God. Now, how do we try or test the spirits to see if they're of God? We'll talk about that in just a second, okay? 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1 and 3, Paul said, Now the Spirit, speaking of Holy Spirit expressively, says in the latter times, some will depart from the faith, and they will give heed or they will embrace deceiving spirits somebody say deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons so again all the warnings are out there that these things were going to happen in the latter times now we could talk about many things that we and i thought about this when i when i got this sermon together uh i could you know we could talk about this we could talk about that but let me talk about one particular spirit um that is very prominent in Eastern religions and, and in New Age. Let me say that again. There is one particular spirit that I believe of all the spirits that have gripped the body of Christ. Now look, we can get into the whole spirit of Jezebel or the spirit of Korah, the spirit of Cain, the spirit of Python. We could get into all these different spirits. But let me talk about this one spirit that is prominent in Eastern religions and New Age that I believe that we have laid a welcome mat out to the body of Christ. And listen to me. Again, I don't like tags and terms, but the Charismatics and Pentecostals, which I, again, guys, I'm right there with you. I believe in the fullness of the Holy Ghost and all these things, so you could coin me as a Pentecostal, Charismatic, whatever. Whatever makes you happy and makes you sleep better at night, that's up to you. But again, we have laid a welcome mat out for this because we're lacking in discernment in the body of Christ, and we're allowing this to come in. And, and uh, this is actually, there's a term for this spirit, and it's called the Kundalini, Kundalini spirit. And it's a word, Kundalini is actually, it literally means snake or serpent. Hmm, that's interesting. Oh yeah, that's right. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 11, I fear lest somehow as the serpent deceived Eve. Now, who is the serpent a representation of? Satan, Lucifer, who deceived Eve in the Garden of Eden. Satan, what did he come in as in a form of? A serpent. But the word kundalini actually means snake. Kundalini is also called serpent power. Because Now again, quote, again, I, and this is from information I've gathered on this. According to sources I've gathered, this serpent power, Kundalini, is a sleeping spiritual force. And again, these are new age terms that is, quote, in every human being that lies coiled at the base of the spine. Once it is awakened, it rises through a series of centers also called ch ch chakras and finds expression in the form of spiritual knowledge and mystical visions. This is some scary stuff, guys. According 
to the tradition, the human body, again, Eastern religions believe the human body contains seven centers of subtle energy referred to uh, as l- lotuses through whose channels the Kundalini rises. Different spiritual t- traditions teach methods of awakening the Kundalini. And we're going to talk about that in a second for the purpose of reaching, quote, spiritual enlightenment. Now, guys, these are new age terms, new age terms. And a range of supernormal powers. Now listen, if I haven't stirred some people up, I will. Just hold on. If I haven't made you mad yet, I'm going to make you real mad in just a minute. Now, according to what I've researched on this Kundalini spirit, when this is manifested in an individual, it will result in, listen to me, violent, uncontrollable jerking, Laughter, bodily contortions, drunkenness, portals, and strange angelic encounters. Let me read that again. When an individual is operating with, by, or under the influence of this Kundalini spirit, which is has its origins not in the Bible, but in Eastern religions, and new age, but when an individual is operating by, of, or under the control of a Kundalini spirit, it will manifest itself in violent, violent, uncontrollable jerking, laughter, bodily contortions, drunkenness, portals, and strange angelic encounters. Now guys, listen to me. I have seen this firsthand in full gospel, charismatic Pentecostal churches. Now, let me explain. Oh, I told you, if I didn't make you mad, I'm going to make you mad right here. But I've seen where people in the church, all of a sudden, the minister, the pastor, the preacher, the evangelist is up and he's reading the word of God with all soberness with all seriousness, and he's trying to exhort the body, he's trying to exhort the believers, and all of a sudden, there's this strange manifestation of uncontrollable jerking and laughter that would take place in the congregation. And then it would go a step further. The minister is trying to capture the attention of the congregation with the word of God, trying to exhort them, trying to edify them, trying to build them up. And these individuals would begin to manifest in these strange, uncontrollable jerking, uncontrollable laughter, bodily contortions and drunkenness states. And it would turn the attention of the people from the word of God and from the man of God to these people making a spectacle of themselves. Now, friends, I'm going to tell you something. That's not of God. Now, you say, well, how can you say that? Again, let's go. John said, try the spirits and see if they're of God. Now, since since we're on this, let's talk about this for a second. Number one, how we know if it's a spirit of God and a spirit of deception is any spirit that takes your attention off of the word of God and off the exhortation and the edification of the word coming forth and it turns and it puts the attention on the individual through these strange manifestations. Friend, that is not of God. Number two, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 32 that the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet. In other words, A prophet who is prophesying to the people can control what he is saying and can stop it at any moment. I can pray in the Holy Ghost right now, but I have the ability to be able to control whether or not I pray in the Spirit or I don't control in the Spirit. Well, I don't know if I believe that. Because listen, all my Pentecostal charismatic brothers and sisters, I love you. 
And, and you know I'm one of you. I'm right there with you. But even Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40, when he's dealing with the gifts of the Spirit, he's talking about prophesying, he's talking about laying hands, he's talking about the gift of healing, the gift of miracles, he's talking about all these things, and he says, let all things be done decently and in order. Let me read that again. Let all things be done in decency and in in order. There's got to be order in the church, friend. Read it. 1 Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 13, 1 Corinthians 14. Okay? So again, this Kondalini spirit will manifest itself like this. I've seen, again, I've seen some strange stuff in the church, guys. I've seen where someone would, would quote unquote get up and try to give a word from God and they would violently shake their heads back and forth to the point where it's they almost give themselves whiplash and they would they would shake uncontrollably and they can't speak. Listen, am I saying that God can't touch people's lives and they can weep and they can show manifestations? Absolutely, God can do that. But again... Paul even says there's got to be order. You've got to try the spirits, friends. We are in deceptive times. And as we get closer and closer to this thing wrapping up, you better know the authentic and you better know the counterfeit. And I'm going to tell you, I, I want all of God that he can give me. I want the real deal. I want the real tongues. I want the real miracles. I want the real healing. I want the real prophecy. I am sick of the fake and sick of the phonies. Listen, all the false prophets are lining up right now to tickle the ears of the people to give them false prophecies for the new year of 2018 and I'm going to tell you it's all going to sound the same it's going to look the same and it's going to be the same rhetoric that's been regurgitated and recycled over and over and over again and people will fall for this mess over and over and over again every year and every year alright now several yoga, several individuals consider that Kundalini can be awakened by spiritual, now here's where it gets scary, ready? By spiritual transmission by a guru or a teacher. By, a, by spiritual practices such as yoga or meditation. Oh, you didn't hear it? Let me say this again. Eastern religions and New Age teach that many spiritual gurus or teachers can release the transmissions of kundalini by spiritual practices such as yoga or meditations that's why we i don't mess with that stuff i don't play with that here's another quote quote these manifestations uh, now here's i want to i want to tell you this right real quick you'll see none of these manifestations in the bible in the written word of god you didn't hear it. I said, these manifestations are not seen with Jesus or the apostles. But you'll see, but you will see where a woman who was bound by a, a spirit that was rebuked by the apostles was manifesting an annoyance to Paul. Then Simon the sorcerer was delved into sorcery and new age and witchcraft. And he was rebuked by Peter. All of these strange manifestations and characteristics are seen in the New Age movement. They're seen in Hinduism and they're seen in many false religions. And watch this, quote, they have their own version of laying on of hands. Okay, again, in Hinduism, New Age and these Eastern religions, you have these gurus or these spiritual leaders that I, you go research it, guys. Get on YouTube, research it. Yeah, I'm not blowing a bunch of smoke. And they will lay hands, the palms of their hands. Let me just read the rest of this. Quote, Multitudes of people in the New Age and Eastern religions experience these powerful manifestations, often by the help of a, quote, guru who touches them on their forehead so they experience a kundalini awakening. Now, let me give you a researcher by the name of Robert Walker wrote a piece in 1995 in which he said, quote, the meetings which mystic Hindu gurus hold are called darshan, 
at these meetings, devotees go forward to receive a, quote, spiritual experience from a touch by the open palm of the hand, often on the forehead by the guru in what is known as the the shakti the the uh the the the, the shakti pat or divine touch the raising of the spiritual experience is called the raising kundalini after a period when the devotee has reached a certain spiritual elevation they begin to shake jerk or hop or squirm uncontrollably sometimes breaking into uncontrolled animal noises or laughter as they re- as they reach an exotic high now friends listen there is documentations there's videotape there's recordings of some of these quote unquote awakenings and revivals that happen even outside of the United States in which we uh, many charismatic leaders have put their stamp of approval on it, and there these strange manifestations were part of these movements and part of these awakenings and part of these revivals in which there was there's video footage. I saw one footage and it actually it absolutely made me sick to my stomach and I and I was so deeply grieved over it. There was an individual on all fours with a dog leash and collar around his neck and somebody walking him around and he was barking and howling like a dog and like a wolf. And these people were were exhibiting all these strange manifestations. Guys, that is not the Holy Ghost. And that gives a bad name to spirit-filled believers who believe in the gifts. of the, That does not look like the gifts of the Spirit. That is not the work of the Holy Ghost. What, rolling around on the floor, barking like a dog, howling like a wolf. Guys, listen, I'm going to tell you. Now, I had many of you guys that messaged me, and, and there was... Uh, there was a there's a lot of chatter going on with with and, and I got to be careful what I say here, but there's a lot of chatter about uh, the groups of individuals and there, there's more than one group. There's a groups groups of individuals that are now uh, taking a page from Eastern religions, Hinduism, New Age, tarot card readers, fortune tellers palm readers and they're incorporating this into the body of Christ and they're creating their own form of this it still has the appearance of evil it still quote unquote operates basically in the same function but they will tell you that it's of God but my problem with this is as Paul said abstain from every appearance of evil and when I go under when I look and I did my own research under one particular website under their mission statement it's says that they receive healings from the third heaven realm and and they also said that they operate through divine energy now friends those two terms are new age occultism terms these are not god no nowhere is there holy spirit it doesn't talk about the father it doesn't talk about god it doesn't talk about the working of uh of the gifts of the spirit it talks about again it talks about divine energy the third heaven realm it talks about divine awakening these are new age terms come on it's time to wake up listen you need to shake yourself and wake yourself up study yourself to, to be approved unto god a workman that needeth not be ashamed rightfully dividing the word of truth and the word of god okay so these are things, again, this is one individual that, that, that researched this. Okay, so again, I got to ask you a question. When, when people ask me this stuff, they said, well, well, Brother Ricky, what about the, what about the, and, and I know you guys have heard this, what about the gold dust and the feathers? And what about the gold fillings that people keep reporting and manifest? And here's what I always ask them. I set them down. Then you've got, there's claims that there's a Bible that seeps oil out of and people are flocking to get little vials and fill it up with oil that's dripping out of a Bible. Friends, this is on the same level. To me, this is on the same level as what many of the Catholic church 
uh, uh, chases after with stigmatas where they have the statues of Mary that, that will cry and they'll uh, they'll sweat and then there's drops of blood and then the, the palms of people's hands begin to bleed. Uh, there is these strange apparitions of Mary and Jesus and talking angels. Guys, I'm telling you, if you're chasing this stuff, you need to repent. You need to get back in the word of God and you, this is idolatry 101. These are false lying signs and wonders and listen here's what I ask I want to ask you the same question that I, when we sit down and talk about this how is this edifying how's this edifying so listen to me watch this here I am if I'm bound in a wheelchair and I'm seeking a miracle of God that God can touch my body and be healed and that I can raise up and walk that God would touch me and that I would have strength in my legs and be healed in Jesus' name. But yet, somebody gets up behind the pulpit and all they do is laugh and bark and carry on like a fool behind the pulpit and a drunkenness, unsobered state. And then I leave the meeting and I'm not healed. And instead, I walk out with gold feelings. Now, I'm going to ask you something. How's that edifying? Come on, I'm going to preach it anyway. I'm, I might lose half of you today, but I'm going to keep, I'm going to stick to the word of God. How's that edify? Even Paul said, let everything be done for the edification of the believer. Everything. Even Paul said, we've received this power, the power of, of the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Listen, I, don't get on here and say, well, I heard Brother Rick and he's, he's blaspheming the Holy Spirit and he's, he's against the gifts of the Spirit and he's against the, the signs and wonders of the believer. No, listen, I believe in the healing power of Jesus because I've been healed in my body. I've laid hands on other individuals and God has used me and he has, he has allowed me to be a conduit of his miracle power and people's been healed before and I give him the glory for that I've seen people being healed of cancer I again I told you I've been baptized in the Holy Ghost and I have a prayer language that I can speak to God I'm like Paul I thank my God that I pray in tongues more than you all Paul said forbid not speaking in tongues I believe the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us and quickens our mortal bodies and the same spirit that raised him from the dead also is in us and and we can do the same miracles and same signs and wonders that Jesus did and greater than he did. But friends, at the end of the day, there has got to be a purpose behind it. There's got to be something that's going to edify the believer. If you come into a, okay, you want scripture for it? I can't turn it here for sake of time. But Jesus said, ask, seek, and knock. For your heavenly Father knows what you need before you ask him. And he that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and he that knocketh the door shall be open unto him. For what man will ask for bread and the holy and the Lord will give him a stone? Or what man would ask for for an egg and God would give him a scorpion? Are you listening to me? So you're not going to go into a service where the presence of God is and the spirit of God is and your and you and the Bible says he ha, he knows what you need before you ask him and he tells us to seek him, ask and knock and you're going into a service to be healed of God and instead of him meeting your need of healing your body, he decides to come in and put gold fillings in your teeth. Come on somebody or he's going to fill the room with feathers. Now listen, can God, can, can, can gold dust show up and feathers show up and be of God? Sure, I guess so. It could. But again, I can't find that in the scripture. But again, I have to ask myself, the end of the day, when I ask the Lord, I said, God, I'm getting ready to speak on this publicly. You've got to show me something. How are we going to discern between this stuff? How are we going to know what's you and what's not you? And he said, son, he said, the Holy Spirit will never contradict the word of God. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit will never contradict the word of God. In other words, if there is anytime there's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit, it's going to be within the realm of his characteristics, his attributes and his purpose. OK, did you get that? Now, somebody tried to tell me one time, well, the Holy Spirit. Now, let, let, me, let me show an example. Let me give you some balance to this, okay? Because I could tell this is bringing a little bit of tension here. 
Someone try to tell me one time, well, I don't believe the Holy Spirit can slain someone and knock them off their feet. And I said, well, excuse me, but if I read right in the book of Acts, Paul or Saul of Tarsus was on, on his way to persecute the church and the Lord showed up and knocked that boy right off of his horse and he hit him so hard he was blind for three days and three nights. So don't tell me, don't give me this stuff. Well, the Holy Spirit is a gentle gentleman and he would never, he would never do something like that. Friends, listen to me. 17 years ago, when I was seeking the Lord and the man of God pulled me out in the aisle and he says, you've been seeking something of, of the Lord. You've been asking for something, haven't you? I said, absolutely. And I was seeking the baptism of the Holy Ghost. This man never met me and he laid hands on me and I felt the power of the Holy Ghost. And it was like, it was like electricity went through my body. And I'm telling you, I could not remain on my feet and I was filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Now you say, well, brother, how do you know? that that was the Holy Spirit and not this Kondalini spirit or a strange spirit. Here's how I know. Number one, I knew the fruits of the individual that laid hands on me. That same individual that laid hands on me 17 years ago is now a pastor of a growing and thriving church in Russell Springs, Kentucky. Number two, he's been married for over 20 years. Number three, he's got children that he loves and he's got a good reputation among men and among the church and among the community. So there's your fruits of that, okay? And he is, and he's won thousands of people to the Lord. So again, you gotta know the fruits. Jesus said you'll know them by the fruit. Number two, know the characteristics or the attributes of the spirit they're operating from. Does it line up with the word of God? Does it line up with what the Lord has written to us in his word? Okay. So these are things, guys, that I have been really troubled on. Let me give you some a word of advice that Paul told Timothy in 1 Timothy 5.22. Paul told Timothy, do not lay hands on anyone hastily nor share in other people's sins. Keep yourself pure. So again, Paul tells Timothy, don't lay hands on anyone hastily. Can I also tell you, don't let anyone lay hands on you hastily either. Oh, you didn't hear it? Let me say it again. Not only is it wise to not lay hands on someone suddenly, but don't let just anybody come over and slap their hand on your head and pray for you unless you know them. The Bible says, know those who labor among you. Come on, somebody. It's the word of God. Why? Because this does, because things can be transferred. Spirits can be transferred. Uh, all these things, you, somebody can have um, all kinds of goofy stuff on somebody and lay hands on somebody. And all of a sudden, you start go into a, a state of oppression. You start exhibiting strange emotional issues and stuff. Why? Now listen, I don't, I don't want to get into the whole thing. Can a Christian be possessed and all this stuff? That's a whole other study. But what I'm trying to tell you, friends, is I believe with all my heart that there is strange, deceiving spirits that, are, that have crept in and that are coming. The floodgates have opened. And because the body of Christ, the more we stray from the word, the more we deter from the written word of God, the quicker we are and the more subject we are to being deceived. This is why Paul said here, he said, you very well We'll put up with it. Paul understood you're going to put up with it. Why? Why are they going to put up with it? Because the simplicity of the gospel is not enough for you. It's not enough for the gospel. It's not enough for the word of God. It's not enough for the message of the cross. It's not en enough for the message of Jesus Christ dying for you uh, uh, on the cross and taking the judgment and taking the sins of the world upon him and redeeming you from the curse of the law and giving you eternal life. It's not enough for you. Well, that, you know, you, you've got to have more. You've got to have, you know, your emotions and your flesh want more. Okay. And when we get into that, friends, I'm telling you, let me, let me close with this. I remember many years ago when there was a quote unquote evangelist who held a quote unquote revival meeting in the far South of the United States. And, um, all of us, and it, and it took off. 
Individuals begin to flock to this thing. Even charismatic leaders put their stamp of approval on this thing. And then all of a sudden, all these strange manifestations begin to manifest and take place in the meetings. You had these uncontrollable jerkings, uncontrollable slitherings, and bodily contortions, uncontrollable drunkenness, portal strange. And let's talk about strange angelic encounters. The, the individual that was heading this up and leading this thing actually came out publicly and said that an angel of God appeared to that individual and told him that to tattoo himself from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet, cover himself in tattoos to win a generation to the Lord. Friends, I'm telling you, that is not... What, what did Paul say? It, the same Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians 11, he also wrote in the book of Galatians, he said, if we or an angel from heaven comes and preaches any other doctrine or any other word to you, count him accursed. Friends, nowhere in the Bible... Does it mention an angel of God coming to anyone and telling them to defile themselves? Listen, I'm not bashing people with tattoos. Listen, I've got good friends of mine that love God and they were tattooed before they got baptized in the Holy Ghost, before they got saved. Uh, listen, that's, that's between you and the Lord, but I'm going to tell you, an angel of God ain't going to tell somebody to get a tattoo. Well, I don't know if I believe that. Well, you can believe what you want, but I'm basing it upon the 66 books of the Old and New Testament. Now, consequently enough, the same individual ended up in adultery, had an affair on his wife, left his wife and his child, and had an adulterous affair, ran off with someone on his staff, and is still with them to this day. Yet, charismatic Pentecostal leaders of major denominations that are still on television put their stamp of approval on this individual. Where is the discernment? Where is the discernment of the Lord? Guys, this is, I am so grieved over this. And this happened here. And this same individual is still having meetings, still having gatherings, and thousands and thousands of Christians are flocking and running and going to the meetings. Why? Because they're chasing signs, wonders, and miracles instead of the God of signs, wonders, and miracles. Again, these signs shall follow those that believe. Not believers follow the signs. Again, I want you to leave today with this understanding. Brother Ricky of End Time Headlines is not against signs, wonders, and miracles. I'm not against the nine gifts of the Spirit of God. I'm not against the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm not against any of this. What I'm trying to tell you is, you better have discernment. You better try the spirits. You better test the spirits. And you better be in this word, friend. And you better be in his presence and be in prayer and your own devotion. Because, friends, I'm telling you, according to my Bible in 2 Thessalonians, uh, Paul warned the church of Thessalonica that before the Antichrist comes on the scene, actually when he comes on the scenes, there is going to be such a level of lying signs and wonder and deception that will happen in the body of Christ that the Bible talks even the very elect will be deceived. Many will fall away because they love not the truth, nor did they received the truth but instead they were enamored by the they were enamored by the glamour they were enamored by the these 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 the the, the signs the wonders and these quote unquote miracles but the bible says there will be lying signs and wonders okay not everything that's supernatural is of god let me say that again not everything that's supernatural that has a tag of god on it or the name of god on it or the name of jesus on it or in the name of christianity not everything is going to be from heaven not everything is going to be of god friends it's about time we have some discernment about us so i'm going to pray for you guys Again, before we sign off, before we pray, if you've if you've yet, golly, I know we got people on here that's come on here for the first time, and they're probably thinking, "My Lord, wow, guys!" I'm telling you, this is the first time I've ever preached this publicly in of my knowledge, and it need it was burning in me. And as we were talking about this this weekend over Christmas weekend, and I'm like, and and I really felt led. I was supposed to because again, guys. 
If I'm if, to some of you guys, I'm your pastor. This is the only I'm the only pastor you have. This is your only church I have, and I refuse to sit back and be silent and allow people to be deceived by this mess. I'm not going to do it. Not on my watch, and not with my ministry. So this needed to be done. And again, if this is your first time joining us, I thank you guys. I welcome you, and I, I pray that you come back. I hope I didn't. Uh, if I run you off, guys, then, you know, so be it. The truth is going to offend, and I understand that. But I, I promise you that we love you. We are going to edify you. We're going to encourage you, but we're going to tell you the truth. There's going to be times of rebuke and correction as well. We believe in the whole gospel of Jesus Christ. So, again, endtimeheadlines.org, endtimeheadlines.com. If you appreciate our ministry and you want to follow us, subscribe to us, bookmark us, whatever the case may be, right there at the top uh, under uh, the description of Facebook Live, you can you can do that right there on here on YouTube. You'll see the information there as well. If you'd like to support us uh, with a gift of any amount, again, we don't we don't sell books, so we don't sell DVDs, we don't sell CDs, we don't do any of that. Uh, we 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 feed the sheep and whatever the Holy Spirit puts on your heart and whatever level of relationship you have with this ministry, everybody's different then you'd be obedient to what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. We do have a physical mailing address for those who would wish to give by check or money order, and that is End Time Headlines, P.O. Box 2312, Clarksville, Indiana, and our zip code is 47131. Again, that's our physical mailing address. So let me pray for you guys. Um, I'm going to get off here for today. Uh, we will. I'm going to try to be back on here Friday night. It'll be Friday evening, no, probably around Friday night. Uh, probably around 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern, a Friday night. And uh, I'm going to try to come and bring a word there as well. So you guys understand if we're going into, uh, as we're going into the new a, a new e, New Year's Eve. My, woo, there's a tongue twister because we we're talking about new age and we're talking about all this stuff. As we are entering into the new year, I recognize that people are coming up of the holidays of Thanksgiving, of Christmas and all this. So there's still a lot of people out hustle, bustle and doing all this stuff. So if you can join us, we appreciate it. If not, just come back and watch the rebroadcast of this as well. So Father, we thank you for everyone under the sound of my voice today. I thank you for those who are watching by Facebook Live. Thank you for those who are watching by YouTube. God, I'm asking for a spirit of discernment. God, Lord, we're asking that you would help us to discern between what is right, what is wrong, what is of you, and what is not of you. Lord, you said in the book of John, or First John, that we're to try or test the spirits to see if they're whether if they're of God. God, we know that we've got to have the word and we've got to have it in our hearts. We've got to have it in our mind. You said this book of the law shall not depart out of our mouth, but we will meditate on it day and night to observe, to do all that's written in it. God, we want to do that. You said, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but he delights in the law of the Lord. And in, 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 in the law, he delights himself. Lord, you said it'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that it'll bring forth its fruit in its season. God, we can't expect to be fruitful if we are not connected to the word and connected to you in prayer and connected to you in fellowship and communion. God, I'm asking that if there's individuals under the sound of my voice that have fallen for this deceptive foolishness, God, that you would set them free from this. God, I, I ask that you would give us a discernment of what's going on in the body of Christ and our churches and our group meetings and our gatherings. Lord, you revealed to these things to us. And Lord, may we be bold. May we draw a line in the sand and say, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord and we will do as the word of God says. Guys, listen to me. If you have any shadow of doubt, it is better to lean on the side of the word than it is of uh mystery okay it's like yeah, one time i went to a small group meeting this was years ago and uh there was an individual the the person who was leading this said that they had a special guest that was going to come and minister to us and this and here's what they said they said this woman who's going to minister to us uh has a gift that she can lay hands on people and send them to the third heaven now immediately when he said that I shut my Bible. My wife was with us, with me. We both shut our Bible and we said, thank you, but no thank you. And we left. We walked out of the meeting because that, my friends, is not biblical. 
And that is new age stuff. Well, wait a minute, brother. I thought you said, uh oh, didn't 2 Corinthians chapter 12, Paul said, whether in the body or out of the body, I don't know. But uh, such a man was taken up into the third. Yes, but it was not a gift. There's no gift of the nine gifts of laying hands on somebody and they go to the third heaven. Friends, that's foolishness and that is new age stuff. That's astro projection stuff, which is a new age term. Again, study. Get in the word, friends. And it's time to shun that garbage and get rid of that stuff. Surround yourself with good, godly, Bible, knowledgeable people that are filled with the Holy Ghost. And those are the people you need to surround yourself with. Get in a Bible believing spirit filled church where the pastor will teach, believe and adhere to these things. So you won't be deceived in Jesus name. So we love you guys. God bless you guys. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon.